Here we're going to be uh, dedicating this video to the concept of forgiveness, which I think is important with families, especially over the Christmas holiday when some families tend to not get involved or there's an ironic effect of of um, trying to get into deep issues and having things backfire. And my thoughts and prayers go out to families that are affected by this, this, um, this backfiring of things that happen. Um, forgiveness is the renunciation or cessation of resentment. Indignation or anger is a result of perceived offense, disagreement or mistake, or ceasing to demand punishment or restitution. Uh, the dictionary defines forgiveness as to grant free pardon and to give up all claim on account of an offense or debt. The concept and benefits of forgiveness have been explored in religious thought, the social sciences, and medicine. Forgiveness may be considered simply in terms of the person who forgives, including for, uh, forgiving themselves, which is, can be a very important thing, just forgiving oneself, in terms of the relationship between the forgiver and the person forgiven. In most contexts, forgiveness is granted without any expectation or restorative justice and without any response on the part of the offender. For example, one may forgive a person who is inc incommunicado or dead. In practical terms, it may be necessary for the offender to offer some form of acknowledgement, an apology, or even ask for forgiveness in order to, for the wronged person to believe himself able to forgive. Most world religions include teachings on the nature of forgiveness, and many of these teachings provide an underlying basis for many varying um, modern-day traditions and practices of forgiveness. Some religious doctrines or philosophies t uh, place greater emphasis on the need for humans to find some sort of divine forgiveness for their own shortcomings. Others place greater emphasis on the need for humans to practice forgiveness of one another, yet others make little or no distinction between human and divine forgiveness. Some interesting research on um, forgiveness Although there is presently no consensus for psychological definition of forgiveness in the research literature, agreement has emerged that forgiveness is a process, and a number of models describing the process of forgiveness have been published, including one from radical behavioral perspective. Dr. Robert Enright from the University of Wisconsin-Madison founded the International Forgiveness Institute and is considered the initiator, initiator of forgiveness studies. He developed a 20-step process, a model of forgiveness, Recent work has focused on what kind of person is more likely to be forgiving. A longitudinal study showed that people who were generally more neurotic, angry, and hostile in life were less likely to forgive another person, even after a long time had passed. So that a neurotic person or angry or hostile person may have a little more trouble. Specifically, these people were more likely to still avoid their transgressor and want to enact revenge upon them two and a half years, maybe, or three years after the trans transgression. So what come, can come into play here is an unintentional transgression or perceived transgression, which makes it more abstract and tough when you have, say, a family issue over the holidays, for example, where one person perceives that another person might be thinking this, or there's a history to... Um, give evidence that this might be the motivation where uh, there's reason enough to believe or that one has malicious intent toward another family member because of history and then not knowing the person well enough may may um, cause that um, unintentional transgression, the perceived transgression, to become more exacerbated, to more off of the scope of reality uh, that shouldn't be there. But, but it because people don't know each other well enough, they assume things and then things get worse and worse. So that's the unintentional, that's the perceived transgression. There also can be an unintended transgression where somebody actually hurt somebody else and doesn't know it. And that's a very fine line between perceived and unintentional. Those are two different things. 
The research of Dr. Fred Luskin of Stanford shows that forgiveness can be learned. Dr. Luskin's work is based on seven major research projects into the effects of forgiveness, giving empirical validity to the concept that forgiveness is not only powerful but also excellent for your health. Dr. Fred Luskin, author of the book Learning to Forgive, was presented with a Champion of Forgiveness Award by the Forgiveness Alliance for the groundbreaking work with forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace. In these separate studies, including one with Catholics and Protestants from Ireland, Northern Ireland, whose family members were murdered in political violence, he found some people who are taught how to forgive became less angry. It would be hard to forgive something like that. I mean, you talk about a family argument at Christmas, but uh, actually when somebody kills somebody else, that's a whole different ballgame across the line. So that's what makes the Middle East so tough is that is that there have been so severe transgressions against relatives and different sects and religion that um, different, different um, parts of religion that uh, it becomes very, very difficult, very, very problematic. Um, in Baha'i faith writings, um, this explanation is given how to forgive toward others. Love the creatures for the sake of God and not for themselves. You will never become angry or impatient if you love them for the sake of God. Humanity is not perfect. There are imperfections in every human being, and you will all, always become unhappy if you look toward the people themselves. But if you look toward God, you'll love them and be kind to them. For the world of God is the world of perfection and complete mercy. Therefore, do not look at the shortcomings of anybody. See with the light of forgiveness. In Buddhism, forgiveness is seen as a practice to prevent harmful thoughts from causing havoc on one's mental well-being. Buddhism recognizes the feelings of hatred and ill will leave a lasting effect on our mind karma. It's called mind karma. Uh, Buddhism encourages the cultivation of thoughts that leave a wholesome effect. In contemplating the law of karma, we realize it's not a matter of seeking revenge, but practicing metta or forgiveness. For the victimizer, truly, pray for the victim, victimizer, the most unfortunate of all. When, resist, when resentments have already arisen, the Buddha view, Buddhist view is to calmly proceed to release them by going back to their roots. Buddhism centers on release from delusion, suffering through meditation, and receiving insight into the nature of reality. Buddhism questions the, real, the reality of the passions that make forgiveness necessary, as well as the reality of the objects of those passions. If we haven't forgiven, we keep creating an identity around our pain, and that is what is reborn. That is what suffers. So, interesting that the different religions see different ways. Jainism. Forgiveness is one of the main virtues that needs to be cultivated by Jains. Supreme forgiveness forms part one of the ten characteristics of Dharma. In the Jain prayer, Jains repeatedly seek forgiveness from various creatures, even from single-sensed beings like plants or microorganisms that may have, uh, may have harmed while eating or doing some routine activities. Forgiveness is asked by uttering the phrase Miniki Dukadam. It's a uh, Prakrit language phrase, literally meaning may all the evil that has been done be fruitless. So, uh, very interesting stuff. Jainism, how we see forgiveness. Um, the need to forgive, um, it's according again to my conversation starter Wikipedia. The need to forgive is widely recognized by the public, but they are often at a loss for ways to accomplish it. For example, in a large representative sampling of American people on various religious topics in 1988, the Gallup organization found 94% said it was important to forgive, but 85% said they needed some outside help to be able to forgive. However, not even regular prayer was found to be effective. The Gallup poll revealed that the only thing that was effective was meditative prayer. So, there it is. Some words about forgiveness and uh, without sharing personal too much. Um, you know, there was a sort of a family rift over the weekend, but um, I'm hopeful that it's on the way to heal already and by and by um, talking about things that are really important, I'm hoping, hoping things will get healed. Um, but it was a pretty rough Saturday, um, mainly phone conversations. But um, 
it was just a rough Saturday. And that hopefully that the siblings who are affected by this can feel that the only logical way is is to see it in positive light, is to see growth rather than destruction, is to see love rather than hate, to sow kindness rather than fear, to be optimistic rather than pessimistic, to see the glass half full rather than glass half empty, to see one another for our strengths, or to see, as in the Christian analogy, to see the God in everyone.